praise the Lord for all the saints that are here and elsewhere. We're happy to be back again on Friday night for the Sunday school night. It is a great night. We thank God for all things that Jesus came before. We bring of a preacher tonight. We would like to pray for he can be the heal of the reactions. Marsha, Mother Lily Thomas, Reverend Sister Irene Rocco, Reverend Sister Nandi Hill, Brother Patrick Manasseh, Mother Ruthie Hall and family, <clears throat> Beverly Thomas, Brother Marcus Page, Sister Rhonda Tarr, Mother Shirley Jackson, Mother William, Sister Sheriff of Pew, Bishop and Mother Tate, Brother Willie Fair, Sister Shirley Lane, Clive Johnson, Brother Roger Lane, <coughs> Danny Hawkins and wife, Edward Hawkins, Minnie Girl Dixon, the Lewis family, Brother Michael Williams and family, Bishop Lawrence Williams, Bishop Baker, family of the Brett. Thank God for all things in Jesus' name. Tonight we're going to pray for them. Won't you pray along with us? Amen. Amen. Well, Heavenly Father, we do thank you for your many blessings. Thank you for all things in Jesus' name. Bless us one by one, God. Give us both strength and power. In the name of Jesus, precious God, we are dependent on you. Trust in you. Say anything we ask in your holy name that you would do. Like you to heal, Lord, heal and heal and in heal. In the name of Jesus. Raise them up, not many that he's here. Heal like you did in the Bible days, my Father. Just one touch in the name of Jesus. Just move in the room where they are. Believe that you will deliver them right now, Lord, in the name of Jesus. You heal others. Do it for these. Get them the confidence in you, my Father. In the name of Jesus, name help of them Jesus. to believe right now. In the name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, we stretch it out on you. Just one church, Lord. Just one church yes. right now. Send your word throughout this world. Church in every situation. In the name of Jesus. Bless us. Right now. We shall be blessed. In the name in of Jesus. In your great name. Now, Heavenly Father, take us through this day. In the center of your wheel, carefully give your name to praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Just here we're going to bring you Mother Curtis. She's coming in her own way. Just give her our undivided attention. Amen. Thank you, Bishop Curtis. Just want to say praise the Lord to the saints. Amen. Thanking God for another Sunday school. Our amen. Thanking God for how he brought us across another week. Amen. Just want to tell the saints, praise the Lord. Amen. Want you to get your Sunday school books. Amen. Open it up and let us go into the word together. Amen. Pray that God touch our mouth and word is as he see fit that we may gain a thought from the Sunday school lesson. Amen. We are studying lesson 2, September 12, 2021. And the subject is death of Nadab and Abihu. Amen. And our lesson is found Leviticus 10, 1 through 7. Leviticus 10, 1 through 7. And our golden text reads, Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. Amen. Psalms 2 and 11. Amen. This particular verse, amen, we are to serve the Lord with fear. Fear in obeying the Lord as he will see fit. God always have a divine plan for us to go by when we are working for him. And in working for him in fear, amen, in obedience, it say rejoice with fear. Trembling. Amen. You ought to be glad the Lord has allowed you to work on his program. Why? Because the Lord doesn't have to allow us to work.
work on his program. Amen. So let us go into the lesson. Leviticus 10 and 1. Say, and Nadab and Abihu, the sons of Aaron, took either of them his censer and put fire therein and put incense thereon and offered strange fire before the Lord, which he commanded them not. Amen. God always have a divine plan for us to go by. If you deviate, you can't celebrate victory. Amen. And we see here, you know, in time past, amen, when you look at uh, Noah building the ark, God had a divine plan for him to go by. If he had deviated from the plan of God having him to build the ark, that ark wouldn't have floated on the water and the eighth person wouldn't have been saved. Think about the Hebrew boys. Amen. God had told them, Thou should not have another God before you, neither should you bow. And they say, O oh, king, amen, we will not bow down. Amen. They consider God's word over that king's word. And the king say, well, we will throw you into the fiery furnace. And they, that's why they celebrated victory, because they went by God's divine plan. They refused to bow to an unreal uh, God. Amen. And think about Daniel in the lion's den. Amen. He wouldn't take down, amen, and God made the lion a pillar for his head and brought him out victorious anyway, amen. And so we see here uh, in verse 1 that uh, holiness is necessary in order to serve God, amen. And when you think about a priest, amen, that's holiness, amen. You can't deviate, amen. So in, in 1 Peter 1 and 16, it says, Because it is written, Be ye holy, for I am holy. God is telling us we ought to be holy. Why? Because he is holy. Last week's lesson was about ordination of Aaron and his two sons, Nadab and Ahu, about you as being priests. Amen. And they were supposed to go by the Mosaic law. Amen. God had approved of Nadab and Abihu and Aaron as being priests. Amen. And all three were ordained priests are authorized to execute the priestly duties of the tabernacle. And then when you come into the tabernacle, the tabernacle is just like the church. You can say, do everything before the presence of the Lord. When you come into the sanctuary, it's a way you enter into his sanctuary. You ought to enter in with thanksgiving. Amen. Why? Thanking God for allowing you to come into his presence. When we come in, in this Church, it ought to be like we're entering into the Lord's presence. And that's what it should have been with a Nadab and a Bahu. They were entering into the Lord's presence. And they had a divine order to go by. You can't have your way because you are bought with a price. Nadab and a Bahu were to abide completely by the Mosaic law. They wasn't supposed to turn to the right hand or to the left. They were supposed to abide completely by the Mosaic law. Their failure to do so not only disqualified them from serving God as priests, but it also cost them their life. You cannot have it your way. Amen. Think about the uh, pastor or the uh, pastors. Amen. Our pastor always say, you follow him as he follow Christ. Amen. The uh, Nadab and Abihu, they were not supposed to do anything on their own. It was already spelled out to them what they should do. When Aaron's sons 
uh, made the decision to alter the Mosaic formula, God's holiness did not make it right for them. Instead, it demanded their judgment. Amen. Why? Because they went against what God said. We got to do it exactly like God would have us to do it. Amen. The judgment of God rested on those who violate his holiness. You got a, uh, uh, Isaiah 35 and 8 say, A highway shall be there and a way, and it shall be called the way of holiness. Letting us know this is the highest form of living that anybody can live. You got to live by holiness. Amen. It's just a, a state of being holy. Nadab and Abiah, they ignored God's instruction concerning incense offering in the tabernacle. They went their own way, and it cost them their life. You can't have it your way. You got to do it by God's command. When God has allowed you to work on his program, you can't deviate, but you got to do it according to God's uh, command. Amen. Verse 2. It says, And there went out fire from the Lord and devoured them, and they died before the Lord. Amen. Their act brought their immediate death by supernatural means. They were devoured by the fire that came out from the Lord. Amen. You can disobey if you want to, but the word says it's better to obey God rather than man. Amen. You can't have it your way. You got to do it like God said. Amen. If God says holiness is the way, that's what we ought to do. We ought to obey God's law. Amen. And this is what they did do. And take this for an example. What Nadab and Abihu did, you better take that for an example. If you don't abide by God's divine plan, you are going to be devoured by the sword also. You better take this as a lesson for you. Verse 3. Then Moses said unto Aaron, This is it that the Lord spake, saying, I will be sanctified in them that come nigh me. And before all the people, I will be glorified. And Aaron held his peace. Aaron held his peace. You say, when the Lord speak, let the church say amen. Aaron will not speak against the Lord, amen, when he sent fire and his sons were killed. Amen. He said not a word. Amen. And don't you know when God, whatever the Lord's will is, it ought to be okay with you. You shouldn't say not a word. Amen. Why? Because what the Lord say, that's it. That settles it. Amen. The Lord responds to Aaron's sons in description, sums up by the Lord's words spoken by Moses. I will be sanctified in them that come nigh me. Amen. They, they had thought they could come before the Lord any old kind of way, offer up to the Lord any old kind of thing, because that's what they wanted to do. When the Lord had allowed you to be a minister, a teacher, a missionary, you got to live by his divine plan. Amen. Why? Because your faith is an example to everybody else. Amen. This is what happened to Aaron's two sons. They deviated and they couldn't celebrate victory. Why? Because God sent a devouring fire, fire, amen, and it consumed them, amen. And what you do don't just affect you. Disobey uh, uh, the fourth verse, saying Moses called Mishael and Elzaphan, the sons of Uzziel, the son, uncle of Aaron. And said unto them, Come near, carry your brethren from.
from before the sanctuary out of the camp. Disobeying God's stand, holy standard is that God's righteous right, wrath will have an effect on others, not only the one that broke his law, but the other ones that's connected to that situation. These two young men, they lost their lives by God's devouring fire. What you do, it won't just affect you, but it'll affect everybody else that loves you. Moses called Mishael and Elzaphan, the sons of Uzziah, the uncle of Aaron, to take those two young men's dead bodies out. Amen. They were Paul Barrett. They didn't give Moses a second word because when the man of God speak, when Moses spoke, that was just like God speaking. He was standing in God's stead. So what, uh, what the two young men did, they took the bodies out of the tabernacle. Amen. And don't you know it's good to be obedient to the man of God. Amen. Why? Because Moses was that mediator then between man and God. Amen. Verse 5. It says, And so they went near and carried them in their coats out of the camp, as Moses had said. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Disobedience often brings forth consequences that affect more than just the offended party. Amen. So we see here that by Abihu uh, and Nadab disobeying the Mosaic law, amen, and carrying it out the way they wanted to, it affected their family. Think about yourself. What you do don't just affect you. It'll affect your family and the ones that care about you. Why? Because God's word, amen, it stands good all by itself. Amen. Verse 6. It says, And Moses said unto Aaron, and unto Eleazar, and to Itamar, his sons, Uncover not your head, neither wring your clothes, lest ye die. And lest wrath come upon all the people, but let your brethren, the whole house of Israel, beware of the burning which the Lord has kindled. Amen. This was supposed to be an example unto them what had happened. God didn't want them to grieve, but he wanted them, amen, to do as he had commanded Moses to speak unto them. The result of violating God's holiness is that to those who do so, become examples for those for what uh, will come to pass. Amen. Those who disobey God's holy word, amen, they was examples for the ones, amen, that was coming on behind them. Amen. Aaron was watching and his other two sons was watching. Because why? The other two brothers, they disobeyed the Mosaic law and they tried to do it their way and it came to be their demise. Moses told Aaron and his two other sons, Eleazar and Ithamar, he said, don't uncover your hands, neither don't tear your clothes, Lest ye die. Lest the wrath come upon all the people. You see what I say? What uh, you do don't just affect you. It affects everybody else that's coming along and that's watching. Amen. The Lord's command Aaron's family not to grieve. Amen. They were supposed to follow God's divine plan. Amen. Like I say, if you follow God's divine plan, you don't deviate, you can celebrate victory. Amen. Why? Because you are operating under the will of God. When you're in God's will, everything is going to be all right. Verse 7. 
and ye shall not go out from the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. This is still God's command to Aaron and the two of the sons. Ye shall not go out from the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, let ye die. Let ye die. Obey. Obey the voice of the Lord. For the anointing all of the Lord is upon you. When God has anointed you to do a job for him, you got to do it exactly by his divine plan. Because if you go any other way, you won't celebrate victory. Amen. It will be your demise. Sometimes you won't die instantly. Amen. But you will die spiritually. So why? Because you have disobeyed the Lord. And the Lord say obedience is better than sacrifice. And they did according to the words of Moses. Why? Because they knew that Moses was standing in the stead of God. And God was using Moses as a vessel and an instrument unto him. The death of Nadab and Abihu ought to be an example even to us. We can't do God's work any old kind of way. We can't do God's work like we want to do it. We got to do it according to the word. Amen. And don't you know we got to keep the whole word of God. Amen. God said if you keep some of the word and offend in one point, he said you are guilty of it all. We got to live by God's holy command from the first word to the last. Amen. Why? Because we don't want God to send that dividing fire upon us. We want to live by holiness. Amen. Holiness is the highest form of living that we can live. Amen. And God say, you be holy, for he is holy. I hope you got a thought. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Thank God for a wonderful lesson. Amen. Real wonderful lesson. Uh, we hope that everyone brought your books. Uh, someone said, well, at the mid Sunday school, you, you don't really have to miss Sunday school. No, all right. Whenever we're doing it on Friday night, Get your book and set it and read it along with us. That, that's what you do it. You know, just because we're not on the inside right now. Don't stop. And study your lessons, study your, uh, uh, your scriptures through, uh, throughout the week. Amen. Uh, evidently, you should have said it 1 Samuel 2 uh, and 12 through 17, Joshua. One, Joshua seven, one to twenty, and uh, Psalms uh, two, ten to twelve, also Acts five, one to eleven. And someone said if you study all your background scriptures, Amen. your lessons for seven years, mm -hmm. you do all of that. They estimate that one will go through the Bible. Amen. So we thank God for all things in Jesus' name. We have a real good lesson tonight. <clears throat> and our subject is, Brother Curtis explained it real well to us. I was even on the subject, the death of Nabal and Abihu. Amen. And uh, our old lesson in our younger days, that the, the golden text always brings out the subject. It says, serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. Amen. <clears throat> because it could mean death for you if you don't, if you don't serve the Lord with fear mm -hmm. and rejoice with trembling. You should be afraid of everything that you do wrong in the house of the Lord. But when you 
doing the things that is right, worn order, rejoice. And, and make sure that you're right when you're doing all this. Nowadays, folks don't have any fear of God. They do it any kind of way. You notice that uh, Bedab and Abayu, they sent up strange fire. Strange fire. The woman to say, well, I didn't, I didn't know that it was strange fire. I didn't know this. I didn't know that. But these men had, you know, had, had, had gotten the instruction just like all the others. You know, in the priesthood. And all the other, when they were instructed, they received the same instruction. But they had no place for being ignorant. No place for being ignorant. No place for one can say, I did not know. Now the Bible tells us to study, to show ourselves approved. A work that need not be ashamed. We need to study what we're doing. We need to listen to what the old leaders taught us. Somebody that deviated, even from that. Amen. When we all came into the church, talk to bring it down to our day. Came into the church, we did not know anything about holiness. We not a thing. Came in with an open mind. When the minister was taking us in the church, that you would, we obey the rules and regulations of this church, and so forth and so on. And to every question we put before it, we said, yes, sir. Hallelujah. But now folks are going the way that they want to go. Amen. You have no excuse, minister. If you don't know, you got leaders that are over you. If, if you if you are uh, associated minister, you ought to ask questions. Don't just jump out there and do things on your own. I see this happening all the time. You know, no respect for God and no respect for God's leaders is a terrible thing. God never give us duties without instruction. I noticed that. Every time I move from one place to another, I always had instruction. Yes, I came up in the church as a deacon. As a deacon, they instructed me how I should be a deacon. How I should obey the one that had ruled over me as a deacon. Made me do my job much better. Amen. No excuse. No room for not knowing. No room for not knowing. Amen. God never sent us out to do a task where he don't instruct us. Even now, even now, things that are not written, God will bring it to your mind how it should go. Amen. All you got to do is just listen to the voice of God. I oftentimes tell you, hallelujah, if you will hear a word Hallelujah, behind you. Hallelujah. And it will come in your ear. Say, this is the way. Amen. All you got to do is follow God. Amen. Uh, hallelujah. God is truly good. You'll find that around uh, Isaiah 10 and about the 21st verse. Read that sometime. God will instruct you. He will lead you. Amen. I thank God for the Lord Jesus Christ. And First verse tells about that uh, that they burned incense. Sent up strange fire. God didn't tell them to do this. If God didn't tell you to do certain duties in church, you ought to leave it alone. Amen. If your pastor don't instruct you to do it, then you ought to leave it alone. Amen. They sent up strange fire to the Lord. And when they sent it up to the Lord, they came wrong. When you come to the Lord, you ought to be sanctified. You ought to be right when you come before Him. You can't just stand before God in any kind of way. Hallelujah. But they, they came up with their own ideas. You can't come before God that way. 
You got to come to God for whatever God wants, what He wants. It's not left up to you. Hallelujah. And this is a good lesson to take in, you know, take in, in heart and in mind. Not always want to do it like you want to do it. I, I asked a question, asked a person, I said, why? One time I said, why did you do that? It's because I wanted to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wrong answer. That's right. You ought to always consult the Lord. You come before God, you ought to be sanctified. God has told the children of Israel to wash their clothes. They will come before the Lord to wash your clothes today yeah, and right. tomorrow. Yeah. Hallelujah. Come before him straight. Come before him sanctified. Now, there was uh, other folks said with other things that they did. Uh, uh, in Leviticus also, Leviticus 10 and about 9, they tell you not to be drunk. Don't drink. Some said maybe they were drunk. You know, it was speculated. Maybe they were drunk when they went in the tabernacle. Then they weren't supposed to go in the holy of uh, holiness. Uh, one writer said that. They had done all of this. And they, they, if you know, you, you go in there, you, you, you better go in there right. Go in there, hallelujah, have the authority to go. Everybody didn't have the authority to go there. And they were saying that these men did that. But one thing we do know, hallelujah, that they sent a strange fire before the Lord. Something God did not instruct them to do. Be very careful when you go out and do things on your own Amen. before the Lord. Amen. Amen. You find out that these men died, hallelujah, and they had they died probably immediately after they did this. And God, hallelujah, wasn't satisfied with what they had done. And the Bible said Moses called and shared. And El Elzipha, the son of Ira, and the uncle of Ira, and said unto them, Come near. Carry your brethren from before the sanctuary out of the camp. That's what they that's what they were supposed to do. Just what Moses had told them to do. God is good, ain't he? Amen. Whenever you instruct it to do a thing in the church, I think one ought to do it with all his heart, all his might. And if you don't have any any, any in the instruction, you ought to go and find it in the Word. Now, I mean, go and find it in the Word how you should do it. Amen. Thank God for this AOH church. Things that we're doing is already written out how we should do it. All you got to do is study. Uh, I used to tell the minister, I said, while I'm gone, if you don't understand how to take a person in, don't be afraid of and, and ashamed. Just get your document book, open it up, put it on the book, and take the person in. You don't understand how to baptize one? I'm kind of, kind of bringing it down to earth. Get your document book, open it up, and hallelujah, and do it just like it tells you. This will tell you how to do everything. It's in our document book. That's why I love the O.E. Church. And folks that deviate from it, Hallelujah. I don't know what's going to happen to you. That's right. Thank you, Jesus. Every one of us was trained and taught by the old leaders. Hallelujah. Just like Moses broke instruction to them, Moses went on the mountain, came back down, and broke the Ten Commandments. Hallelujah. You seen him acting up, then he broke them. Went back up, and God gave him uh, the, the commandments over again. Hallelujah. God will make sure, one way or another, that his people have good instruction. They were broken, but when Moses went back, God gave it to them again. Evidently, it must be important, hallelujah, for you to keep the commandments of God. Evidently, it's important for one to keep what the Lord is telling us to do.
and how to do it. Folk overlook everything now. It, it goes any kind of way. Any kind of way now. Hallelujah. And uh, those of us who really know, it's sad and it hurts to our hearts. Amen. But you hear a word behind you. Those who are sad, you hear a word behind you. Say, this is the way. Just keep out on God yourself. Amen. Do what the Lord tells you to do. Hallelujah. This is a real good lesson. It's a good lesson. And, and mainly telling us to be obedient, do the things that God has asked us to do. Amen. Don't go to the right or don't go to the left. Just do it like God says. And you'll come out victorious every time. Mother Phyllis did a good job. I'm about ready to close the book. Keep on doing the way God. I, it doesn't matter who it is that try to make you go wrong. Sometimes just keep your mouth closed and just do the thing that is right before God. Because God is soon to come back. All these lessons that we've been having been pointing us to obedience and doing things that God has told us to do. We see if one deviates from the word of God oh, in right. holiness, it can cause you to die. Amen. Mother Peter said something that was very profound. Yeah, you may not die, you know, you know, as we say for real. You may not die physically, but you will die spiritually. Amen. So sometimes it's little by little. The enemy comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And sometimes you don't come in forcefully, hallelujah, with his big plan. I say he doesn't come in forcefully with his big plan. All right. He come in and get you little by little. That's the way he works. Little by little. He you to do a little this time, a little more another time, a little more again and again. Then all of a sudden he can do the big thing. When you look up, you're gone. Amen. Hallelujah. Why? Because you did not obey the word of God. Steady yourself. Steady. So you can do what the word of God tells you. God is calling for a holy. That we usually come to this chapter. Yeah, Leviticus 10 and 10. We usually come here. Hallelujah. To tell you about holiness. Hallelujah. God said put a difference between holy and unholy, clean and unclean. Hallelujah. But today we got another lesson from it. We got a lesson of what? Truly being obedient. That's what it spoke. That's what it said to me. Truly being obedient to God's word. If you don't obey God, you're going to have to pay the consequences. Amen. Amen. We're about ready to go. We thank God. Hope you uh, got something out of the lesson today. Good lesson. Been broken down real well by Mother Chris. Amen. And we thank God for thank God for her studying the lesson so well and breaking it down for you. Amen. If you didn't understand it, go back and read it and study it again for yourself. Amen. 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 We're about ready to go. Thank God for you. We're going to look for you Sunday morning. We plan to be in the parking lot again Sunday morning. Yeah, those of you who desire to come to the parking lot service, come on. We're not about to change right now. Amen. I'm seeing what the hospitals are doing. Seeing what they're saying. Amen. Some, some of my close friends and relatives have been tested positive. I let me know this thing is real. I'm not listening to just the news, but I'm hearing it from individuals that's in the church, hearing it from friends that's in the church, hearing it from my kinfolk. It is real. So take care of yourself. Amen? Amen. Because we do want to live. Hallelujah. We got ready to go. Thank God for you. We appreciate you listening uh, to the program today. Let us know if you're enjoying this. 
by sending us a card or something, you know, to let us know. We don't, you know, you don't have to send the money. Don't worry about that. Just send a card. Say you appreciate it. Amen? Amen. Somebody said you shouldn't have said that. Well, do what God put on your heart to do that. Thank God. Thank God. Our hearts are clear. Amen. May the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, the sweet communion, that the Holy Ghost rest, rule, and abide with his people, now and henceforth and forevermore. All of you say, Amen. And we love you more. God bless you.